Good morning, good evening, good night, ladies and gentlemen. Really nice to be with you. My name's Ken Brinston. I'm Patriots Chair, and it's my pleasure to be involved in the first of what hopefully is more to come of uh, Patriots conference calls, but in this, in this particular case, targeting uh, the release of our maiden resource and also a bit more discussion about our um, strategic investment and, and chemicals MOU with Albemarle, both of which really represent significant developments for the company and an important part of the future development of the Corvette project. Blair, our president and C CEO, is going to be talking to the detail. I'm really just here to help with some introductory comments and to close the call. Of course, the release of the maiden resource, whilst a long time coming, it's a really important part of we're drawing a line in the sand for the significance of the Corvette discovery. It really is a special piece of geology and to have printed such a, a, a significant maiden resource is really important development for, for demonstration of the, the significance of the project and its global importance as, an, as a key exploration and lith development lithium project. Um, globally. So, so a big maiden resource, but as Blair will outline, um, our expectation is that there will continue to be developments, further mineralization discovered um, for all the, the uh, really important sort of geological presence that, that exists at the Corvette project. There is so much more work to do, and this is really just the beginning. When you think about the significance of the Corvette discovery, then you really need to think about what the future is going to look like. And that's why we've been prepared to entertain discussions with the chemical industry about how we ultimately interconnect what we hope to be a future mine at Corvette with future chemical capacity. And that's really what's motivated us with respect to, to interaction with the industry and culminating in this first round of, of relationship building and chemicals with Albemarle. Albemarle, as many of you will be aware, is a global leader, especially in the Western world, as it relates to chemical conversion and lithium uh, products more generally. Um, we've been really happy with the development of that relationship. And, and of course, that's now culminated in their strategic investment in our company, uh, but also really important conversations about how we can interconnect the mine with chemical capacity. And all of that will unfold over about the next nine months. So both really important developments for the company, and Blair will help outline some of that detail from here. Thanks very much, Blair. Thanks, Ken. And thanks everyone for tuning in to our, uh, our first webinar for Patriot Battery Metals. And I guess it's probably good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to the various listeners that we have scattered around the time zones. I'll, uh, I'll jump right into our presentation um, simply so we can just quickly go through that and then advance into into our um, q and a, which I think will probably be quite helpful for people to be able to have some some interaction here with us as we work through the key things. as Ken mentioned, we'll be talking about our maiden resource and of course the strategic invest investment with uh, Alamo. One of the things we do have to talk about, of course, we will be you know advising all participants. It, it is very well covered here in this statement, but it's about the fact that uh, we will be making forward-looking statements throughout this webinar. We just refer you to this uh, disclaimer that we have on our presentation, both on our website and on CDAR. So there is that sort of advance warning, but let's carry on. So just a high level talk about Patriot Battery Metals. Obviously, we're a hard, hard rock lithium exploration company. We're focused on advancing the Corvette property. It's 100% owned, 214 square kilometers. 50 kilometers of strike in the Greenstone Belt area that we have 100% ownership of. Our CB5 maiden resource was released uh, Monday this week uh, in, in Australia, 109.2 million tons at 1.42% um, inferred. So it's it now is the largest lithium pegmatite discovery in, in the Americas, as well as the eighth largest globally. So having said that, it is just the beginning. We still have over well, we've done about four kilometers of 50 kilometers of, of, of or ground or targeting that we are drilling. So there's a significant upside of potential both at CB5 and beyond the many uh, targets that we'll talk more about. So again, 50 kilometers of trend. So there's still a great deal of upside. What we have drilled and what we have identified certainly has the size of being the largest in the, in the Americas, but also 
the potential for scaling that up and also the quality of the mineralization of spodumene. Mineralization is certainly lending itself to a very sensible flow sheet with this DMS only and high recoveries. We are fully funded to execute on our exploration technical studies and we have a proven management team to move forward. I will jump right into the strategic investment and MOU. So this is really just a restatement of what we've already entered into, but we've entered into an agreement, a private placement of 109 million dollars i would expect that to close at the end of this week it's a strategic investment in the company and the funding is used to advance the company's lithium project as well as some general corporate purposes uh, upon closing uh albemarle will hold 4.9 percent of fully diluted or 6.4 percent of the issued note standing basis we also are entering into a non-binding mou to basically assess partnerships to identify opportunities and, and you know, progress forward on a downstream lithium hydroxide plant integration with the project. So we're looking forward to it, to working with, with Albemarle on this. They have obviously the skill set in the lithium hydroxide side of, of the industry as a leading lithium producer, and we feel there's some great opportunities for us to work together in the future. We've also entered into an investor right agreement, which is part of this placement and where there are certain restrictions on as far as lockup on acquiring more shares and also maintaining their existing ownership level and then also voting in favor of things uh, with respect to the board and, and that sort of stuff. Uh, we'll jump into the maiden resource as I mentioned earlier 109.2 million tons at 1.42 percent um, in purge. It is a tier one world-class spodumene pegmatite. We've got the size the grade and the metallurgy, eighth largest in, in the America, sorry, eighth largest in the world, largest in the Americas. Um, on 56, uh, basically it's based on 56,000 meters or just over 56,000 meters of drilling. And we've identified a significant uh, pegmatite, spodumene pegmatite body with thicknesses ranging from eight meters up to 130 meters, spanning over 3.7 kilometers. So. It is only the CB5 pegmatite. It is also an NI43 resource. So we will talk about that a little bit more, but it is an NI43 resort, which has some door compliance, but it is the NI43 rules that have defined this definition of the, of the resource. So there are some higher levels of, of I guess, restriction in, in respect to our, our pit design and some of the parameters in order to define the economics, early stage economics for this resource. This just shows the side view of the of the deposit. So again, 93% of it is in the one principal pegmatite body. So it is one long, massive pegmatite intrusive body, which is containing the majority of this in of this resource. There are a couple of splays on, on the side, but again, the majority of it is, is in the one primary uh, pegmatite body. So as we talk about what lays ahead of us now, we've uh, when now we've put the resource out and we have the, the funding in place in order to accelerate some of the drilling, we're going to drill out CB13, we're going to extend CB5, and we believe there's potential to extend it beyond CB5 all the way to CB13, but the drill bit has to do that for us, and we're continuing the work. As we now have rigs drilling, or rigs turning again on site, we have a couple there now, and we're starting to ramp up after the fires. We will also be putting uh, drills on CB8 and CB12, CB9 and CB10 towards the latter part of the summer so we can better understand what we have there. Potentially, we have still just in this area here on screen is about 20 kilometers of trend that we, we intend to drill out to extend beyond what we've defined in our maiden resource at CB5. So there's still an extraordinary amount of upside yet to be defined by the drill bit. It's a lot of drilling and uh, we do we will be putting a focus on CB13 to put out a resource on that in Q2 next year or so or Q2 2024. This shows some of the area that just to demonstrate the scale of that 50 kilometer strike length that we're working on, you can see the blue highlighted areas are the areas that we've actually done field work and done drill targeting. There's still over 25 kilometers of ground yet to really have you know field work and mapping and, and channel sampling and and a more definite more more drill targeting so we still have a great deal of work field work left on a large part of the property so again the point to take away from this is the incredible upside that we still have on this property even though cv5 has proven up to be something quite significant 
And we jumped just to the sort of fine, uh, the, the, the high level catalyst that we have, have ahead of us. We've obviously just put out the mineral resource. We're very excited about the, the results there. We're working towards a PFS towards the end of 2024. We are back on the ground again, drilling. We're back on the ground doing baseline environmental monitoring. We're targeting a project description, which is a commencement of the permitting process for the CB5 project area. That permitting is around a two and a half year cycle, which allows us to then be permitted for construction in 2027 and rolling through that into 2028 for commissioning and production. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we are drilling uh, CB13 this summer and with the intent to put out a resource in probably around Q2 next year in 2024. So I think that's sort of a quick wrap up of where we stand. Um, I will open, I think, the floor up now to uh, Q&A and we can happily respond to questions as, as appropriate. So the question comes from Shannon Bill with Formac Security. Please go ahead. Um, yeah, I was just wondering if you wanted to include CV13 eventually. At this stage, we're not considering CV13 as part of that project description, but obviously we still have a little bit of time. That's one of the reasons why we're not planning on submitting it until the end of the year. But certainly CV5 is very significant in its own right. We've identified CV5 extending to the west away from the lake, which allows us to have a starter pit there, which then allows us to, to actually have material that we use for the future um, bunding or damming off of the lake in the appropriate area in order to drain the downstream part and divert the upstream. Um, so at this stage, we're not considering CV13, but it's not ruled out. It really depends on, on how the drilling goes this summer. We've only got 14 holes at this stage in, in CV13. So depending on what it yields, it, it could be adjusted. That's a, But once we put a project description in, we don't have a huge scope of, of altering it. Um, the preference is to, you know, consider the various parameters and, and we may well put CV13 as a possible option, but at this stage, it's not, it's not being considered for the, for the initial project description. Uh, what are your plans going forward for uh, continuing metallurgical work? Um, that's really just part of the normal process of working through the pre-feasibility work. So we are undertaking met work as more material becomes available as we obviously drill the more holes as we as we extend out beyond the uh, at CV5. So that drill hole material parts of, you know, components of that or portions of that are sent to the lab to continue um, expanding on the metallurgical test work. But the results that we've received so far for both CV5 and CV13 have been very promising and very consistent. So when you see that sort of consistency across the extent of the pegmatite body and the spodumene mineralization behaving the same way, um, it lends us to a much higher or continuing to grow our confidence in a DMS circuit only for processing the CV5 and also CV13 um, discovery. So we feel right now, obviously we have to continue to work on it, but the actual flow sheet for DMS is a relatively straightforward engineering solution. It's pretty much off the shelf sort of equipment tailoring it slightly to, to the idiosyncrasies of our particular deposit, but it's not a particularly complex engineering process for DMS alone. Great, great. Thanks so much. That was a congratulations. Your next question comes from Mitch Ryan with Steve Ray. Please go ahead. Uh, good morning, Brian. Thanks for the time and for the Can you talk us through um, the timing for permitting? When you could commence that process and then how long would you expect that to take? I'm happy to answer that, Ken. Um, as we, as I mentioned earlier, the project description is the is what we were just discussing in the previous question with Shannon in respect to the 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 kickoff of the permitting process is submission of the project description, which is defining the business model that we are planning around CV five. So that that commences the 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 submission of a project description is the commencement of the permitting process, and then it's a two and a half year permitting process to go through gathering baseline data, preparing EISs, your consultation. And that generally, that puts us towards really into early 2027 to, re to receive permits to construct, then going through the construction and then final permits for operation um, in 2028, commissioning and operations. That's a broad timeline. It's pretty reflective of similar projects in Quebec that have actually been working through through the permitting process in a, in a, in a in a sort of a progressive manner. Thanks very much, Blair, uh, for your detailed responses there. Much appreciated. 
And in closing, just a couple of quick remarks about you know the summary position, but also a little bit about where to from here. Blair, thank you for your diligence and that of the team. The team's working really hard to ensure that we deliver on what is an amazing project. And I'm confident that Blair and his team are the right people to continue to grow the, the significance and the, the um, development potential of the Corvette Discovery. Um, it's really in three parts. It's what's happening at CB5 to continue to delineate the combination of resource and hopefully a future reserve and mine development strategy. Near mine resource development with a view to the, the, um, the, uh, the mineralization envelope growing, we think, substantially over time. And then, of course, delivering on the potential in the exploration on the balance of the, the amazing geology that exists at the Corvette project. So really, having only drilled four kilometres of, of a you know, 45 to 50 kilometre strike length um, indicates that there's plenty of potential to realise yet. Thanks, everyone, for your participation on the call. I really appreciate your involvement. And don't hesitate to touch base on the website um, or to any of the key execs if you'd like to find out more information and or engage more in the subject matter that was discussed today. Thanks for your participation and we'll look forward to catching up with you soon.